This is Breaking Down Security, and I am Brian Brake. Welcome back, listener. This is Brian, Ms. Berlin, and uh, Mr. Petra will join us a little bit later. But this is Breaking Down Security. Hello. Hello. All right. So, yeah, Mr. Betcher, he's not here right now. Uh, Thursday nights are his uh, maintenance window at work. I wish he... I could do a better job of impressions. I would have said his, hey guys. his little hello, too. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's, it's slightly pervy, but with, like, you know, southern accents. So, <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, there he, you go. he breathes into the mic a little less than you do. <laughs> oh, really? Sorry. <laughs> I'm, joking. I, I'm working on my betcher, Mr. Betcher. So anyway, <laughs> so uh, we're going to make up for last week because uh, we were lambasted by people on our own show that we didn't have a lot of information security topics on last week. So um, we'd been planning this one for a while. Um, shortly after DEF CON, somebody reached out to us and said, hey, I was on the uh the social engineering CTF at DEF CON. And, uh, you know, I did, a, I, he did fairly all right, apparently. Uh, and he wanted to come on the show and talk about it. So I was like, yeah, cause I have only heard things about it and anecdotes and, and stories. So, um, yeah. Welcome. Uh, Robert. Oh crap. I do better. <laughs> Robert sell. I'm you sorry. Can, Robert sell. You can just call me Robert. That's no. fine. Robert sell. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I, I usually have the chat window up with your name or something. All right, so. let's start all this over again. Yeah, we're, just we'll just, yeah, we're just, three, two, one, go. Fix this, fix okay. this in pride. Yeah, we'll just, yeah, fix That's it. That's okay. Fix it in post. Yeah. I've been called worse. Okay. Uh, Robert. Yeah, Knock. thanks for having me. Cool. Pleasure to be here. So, Robert, tell tell people a little bit about yourself, what, what you do in your normal day job when you're not, uh, you know, social sure. socially the engineering the things. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I think we're all social engineering all the time, actually. But, but what I do for a living is I'm in IT. I've been in IT for as long as I can remember. Uh, you know, I just worked my way up through support, sysadmin. Uh, now I'm in management. And um, yeah, I've been doing that for about 20 years now. Security is a big part of that. And um, social engineering has never really been a formalized component of that. But uh, it's becoming more and more so. And uh, I went to DEF CON. Uh, two years ago, and I went, just sort of wandered into the social engineering village and saw what they were doing in there. And uh, right away, I made myself a promise. I said, I got to be part of that. And uh, yeah, then, then I built, then I was this year. So just amazing experience. So, so you, so you went like last year, saw what was going on, and then you decided this year you were going to train up for the Olympics or whatever, you know, with all the <laughs> montages and everything and getting better and yeah. stuff. And then you, you did Playing it this Rocky year. Rocky music. Yeah. Rocky exactly. Music. Exactly. So I, I, you know, last year the, was the, my first time at DEF CON. Mm. I, you know, you go to Black Hat and Black Hat's very kind of formalized. It's very kind of your traditional conference. Uh, and that's what I was used to. You know, you, it's very um, regular. You go to your different talks, you get your lunch, you go to more talks, then you go back to your hotel. Mm. So very kind of typical. And so I thought, well, I'll go to DEF CON. It sounds exciting. You, you know, you get your ticket as part of your Black Hat uh, registration, which works out great. And um, it blew me away. It just, it's so different. It's more like going to Burning Man than it is going to a conference I found, right? Wow. Um, okay. I've never been to Burning Man, so I don't know that either. So I want to go to Burning Man I, yeah. so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go to Burning Man, right? I mean, we're all out here to learn and, mm. uh, you know, DEF CON is, I would say, for your dollar especially, right? You're not paying a lot of money, but what you're getting is phenomenal, right? Because you're not going to passive talks and just kind of listening and checking your email. You're actually going as deep as you want to go. So last year when I went, I walked around. I took little bits of, you know, everything. I went to different villages. I listened to a few talks. And I realized, holy cow, you can go really deep with this. Mm -hmm. Even in the lineups, right? You're talking to people and you're meeting people from the CIA. You're meeting people that won't tell you their real names because, right. you know, maybe they're doing stuff they shouldn't be or whatever, right? But everybody's super interesting, um, you know, very friendly. So I just learned so much from those few days. Um, and then the social engineering village was just kind of the icing on the cake. And I was just, 
you know, I said, okay, next year, I'm going to spend a lot of time in this room and go real deep right here. And uh, that's what I did. Yeah. So it's, I, I highly recommend it over anything else. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> give us, give us an idea of what you had to do to prepare for the, 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 the social engineering bit. Cause, um, from from uh, people are out there who've obviously been to DEF CON and, and from what I've heard, and I, I mentioned this before the show, I said, all I know is that there's a phone booth, you sit in it with a phone and you call companies and make them divulge information. And there's mm-hmm. much like a regular CTF, there's certain flags that you have to get from them. So you either yeah. call phone, you know, text port or whatever. So you said that yeah. that was fairly concise, but there must be some additional things that you're doing to, to prepare for yeah. this. Cause obviously you have to do, um, you know, I mentioned vulnerability yeah. OSINT getting research, but you have to do a lot of that for this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, the process, the way it works, uh, they, they release, uh, they, they put an announcement out. They say, okay, we're going to take, uh, applications for this, um, CTF. And uh, you put in the paperwork, you say, hey, my name's Rob, I'd like to do this. Uh, and then they also ask for a video, which is hmm. optional. But if you really want to do it, you should put in a video because hundreds of people apply. And a lot of that, a lot of the chance of you getting selected is going to be based on your video. They kind of want to see who you are. Can you get in front of a group of people? Um, because getting in front of 300 people for 20 minutes and trying to perform can be nerve wracking for people. So they sure. want to just see, can you make a video and can you talk to us and, and do something entertaining? Tell um, me about your video. Like, what did you include? Yeah. In yours? Like mine's, mine's so, still out on YouTube. Is it? Uh, I got to go yeah. look for yours. You, yeah. you can watch mine because it's on YouTube as well. And so I knew that I was up against some really talented people out there, right? When you go to DEF CON, you know, you realize you meet some wonderful people and you realize how experienced and and awesome they are, right? So I knew that that's what I was up against. So how do I compete with that, right? I'm not, you know, a social engineer expert by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. So what do I got to do here? So I got to make a really interesting video. So that's what I tried to do. Unfortunately, you know, work and life gets in the way sometimes. And so I was really running against the schedule pretty tight. And so late at night, one evening, I went down to the basement. And I'm like, okay, I got to get this done. I got like an hour or two. Let's just crank it out. And um, so that's what I did. I went downstairs. I got an Xbox and a TV downstairs. And uh, I used some of the Xbox platform toys to light up my face, okay. and um, which I thought seemed reasonable at the time. But it made <laughs> me look super creepy. And... Uh, <laughs> It was okay. Unbelievably creepy. And, and then my script really was trying to convince someone to click on a link. And um, yeah, the whole thing just turned out to be super creepy and weird. And <laughs> but at the end of it, I was like, that's kind of what I'm looking for, really. Because at the end of the day, you're going to watch that and it's going to be burned in your mind, right? right. It, maybe not in a good way, but it, you're not going to forget about me. And so I went with that. And, um, you know, I think it had this, the effect I was looking for because they, they sent me an email and said, Rob, you're up, which wow. totally freaked me out. Yeah, because that's, yeah, I was super happy, right? It was mission accomplished. At least I got my foot in the door, right? Mm-hmm. So I get to play. And um, so I was just, you know, on cloud nine, I was so happy. I'm going around telling everybody, hey, I'm going to DEF CON. I'm going to compete. And then, you know, you get out of that little honeymoon stage and you realize, oh, crap, now I got to do the work because the worst thing that could happen now is I go into the booth and just don't really like do a bad job based on my lack of of prep. Right. So I thought I got to just prep. Yeah. So that's what I did. My evenings and weekends were gone and um, I had three weeks to get it done. And, um, you know, I say my evenings and weekends were gone and I, I put in over a hundred hours of, of time on Goodness. this, you know, maybe more, just a huge amount of time. And, um, but it was so addictive once I started getting into it. Right. So that stage, once they give you the letter and say, here's your company, here's your target company. And this is the industry that it's in. Cause every year they pick an industry and this year it was the gaming industry. Right. And, uh, they gave me the company, which was weird cause I own a bunch of their games. So, I felt a little bit bad that way, but, um, who was your company? You know, I, I had, 
Um, yeah, so I can't really say that, um, but I, I, I can say they make awesome games. Okay. Um, so, Is it some sort of so, pseudo uh, NDA kind of thing? I thought uh, we were allowed to yeah, tell because I tell people all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a bit careful <laughs> with that because they were actually upset. Um, uh, and so I think a lot of companies that, that become part of DEF CON involuntarily, um, they have this knee jerk reaction where they're, they get really upset and they feel kind of cheated, I guess, by DEF CON. Right. And I, it's really too bad, right? Cause this, the, this, the SECTF is super well organized, you know, Chris and his crew do such a good job and they're very careful about the information that gets sent out to the public. Right. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the flags are all relatively benign, right? There's no PII, there's no credit card information, there's no uh, passwords, there's nothing like that, right? It's information that's all publicly available. So it's, you know, it's it's pretty safe. And, yeah. and anything that, that gets communicated live, they they mute. So if someone is gonna give out the, some information about a, their username or something, they mute it. So nobody in the crowd hears it. So they're extremely careful that way. But still, companies, I think, get a little bit, uh, especially initially, that, that knee-jerk reaction. Um, they, they get a little bit upset sometimes. I, so I'm a bit I careful. Think, I think I remember him telling the story once. Uh, maybe it was him or maybe it was somebody else that was there. Um, that a, a year or two before I did mine, they, um, they did like big box stores and like one of the higher ups at Meyer was in the room yeah. when they when they did the call. Oh my. Yeah. So which yikes. The company I did was um, <laughs> you know regular attendees at DEF CON. They mm. were at DEF CON when I was doing my competition. Ouch. And um, their whole IT department, I had pictures of all of them and they're you know a lot of them were wearing the black hat DEF CON, you know, shirts and t shirts. And so yeah, yeah, they're they're usually there somewhere. Yeah. So yeah. They weren't in the room during the exercise, but yeah. So then once you're accepted, you've got three weeks to uh, do your report and they give you a template because um, most of us are actually terrible report writers, apparently. And so you get a template and um, you get your flags and you've got, I think it was 29 flags that you have to go do your OSINT on. Goodness. And um, it was just so fun, right? It's just going down this rabbit hole. And uh, as I got going, you kind of begin to think like you feel you, you know the company, right? You know the people in the company. And um, it was so neat. Like I knew what gym memberships they had. I knew, you know, the executive's personal cell phone numbers and where they lived and how many cats they had. And it just went on and on and on. I think at the end of the day, I had over a thousand data points on all these people. Now, so, are you allowed to call them beforehand to get information or is that a, a no, no? Yeah. So that is one of the big rules is what you want to do in your report is have your target phone numbers. And so that's who you're going to call. And then you need to have your spoof phone numbers. So who do you want to show up as? Mm -hmm. So you are not allowed to engage in any way. If, if you did, it would be, you'd get way more. But for, the, for this exercise, you're only allowed, the only engagement you can do is to call and confirm that the phone numbers you're calling work. Right. So basically you have your number, say it's for their main reception. You phone it, she picks up or he picks up and you say, oh, sorry, wrong number. And you hang up. Okay. So that's as deep as you can go. Right. Uh, real attackers, of course, could do a whole bunch of stuff or arrive on site and everything else. And yeah. get way more. Now, so. did you uh, did you feel the need to maybe, f uh, I don't know, maybe other competitors did this, but... Uh, did you did you think maybe you should have flown to the headquarters to see what you could find out? Maybe do a little dumpster diving, that kind of stuff? Because I'm thinking OSINT is not just Google dorking. You might have to do some physical stuff as well. Yeah. You know, go up to the guard and say, hi, I'm here to see uh, Joe Bob Billy or whatever. You know, did, yeah. did you find the need to do any of that? No, you're not supposed to do that. Oh, okay. and, um, and And I think that takes it up to a whole different level. Right. If you're permitted to do that, then you could just go to town, right? There's so right. much more you could get doing that. But it was fun to be limited that way, right? Um, and, and it actually was pretty far away from where I live. Oh, okay. um, so it was fun to have that restriction, right? Because it really forces you 
to to become really good just with with the you know online stuff right and and you had to get really creative i hadn't spent a lot of time before doing that and so i didn't have a lot of automated systems all set up to go you know do geo tag or geo location with social media i did a lot of it all by hand right hmm. okay um, i was chasing these different paths where you know i would go on the slide share and find a reference letter which would have then some of the executives personal information on it i would use that then to go a little bit deeper and uh, just layer on top of layer right so yeah it's great okay so amanda um you mentioned before the show as well that you had you had competed in a in an SE contest. Um, did, does a lot of what he said echo what you were doing, or was uh, was that contest in, in, in different? No, I don't think they've changed a lot. I mean, it was just uh, what this was twenty five, so three years ago. Um, it was just a different industry. I oh, think okay. I think sometimes the questions might change a little bit, just so they're not the same. Um, from year to year. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I mean, the concept is, is pretty much the same, I think since they've started. So, <clears throat> all right. So I'm going to ask this question to both of you. So you had so many data points Were you using those data points to then get that answer from whoever it is you're going to call. And that was to verify they actually had the right answer. Like, how many employees do you have in your office? Or, you know, I'm looking for the VP of finance, but you already know who the VP of finance is. You're just wanting somebody to give you that answer back. Uh, or I mean, you know, how, ideally, how <laughs> ideally, I didn't, it didn't work like that for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Robert. On, on the calls, yeah, on the calls, you can, uh, if they tell you that information again, you get those points and it's actually worth more on the call. Okay. And um, once you get somebody on the phone, which was, you know, my biggest challenge was getting them to pick up, um, you can then uh, go to different people, right? So if I say, uh, you know, what kind of computer do you have from person A? They give it to me, I get points. If I move to person B, same question, I get those points again. Um, mm -hmm. so it's a little different than the OSIN where you can only get those points once for that particular flag and, um, asking them, okay, well, what kind of computer do you have? I found was less effective than confirming what they have. If you already know it from the OSIN. Mm. So okay. usually just have them say yes was, was way faster and easier. Do you get the same amount of points by them saying yes? Or um, if you say, is Bob Mitchell the VP of finance? If they say yes, do you get the same amount of points? Then if you said, hey, you know, and you get around it and somebody says, oh, yeah, that's Bob Mitchell, our VP of finance. Is that is it different by mm -hmm. them confirming it or them volunteering the information? I don't think there's any yeah, yes no, or no questions. There's no yes, it, no questions? Yeah, it's the same points. Same same points as long as they confirm who it is, right? So if you were to say uh, Bob's your VP, right, uh, and they go they confirm that, then you'll you'll get the points for that. If okay. you say who's your VP and they say Bob, you you get the points as well. It's the same amount of points. There's nothing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so them confirming it uh, or them volunteering it is. It, I would I would think that them volunteering that information would be more damaging than you, you know, asking them something like oh mm -hmm. is is you know you know, Gordon Shumway, your, your VP, you know, and they go, yes, you know, um, yeah. it, it seems to me them volunteering that information would be more damaging in the long run, but you know, uh, yeah, you know. absolutely. Cause that's usually the information you don't have. Exactly. Right? exactly. So if you already have it, you're just getting them to confirm it. Uh, it's probably much easier for you to harvest online, mm -hmm. but if you don't and you have to actually ask them, okay, well, what is that? Yeah. Uh, then yeah, that's, that's probably going to be worth a lot more to you as a, an attacker. Yeah. So Amanda and Robert, tell me some of the things that you actually looked for when you were doing your research and how, and what, what sites did you go to? You know, what, what things did you do to gain access to the internal workings of these organizations? Go for it. You're the guest. <laughs> ah. All right. Thanks, thanks Wow. I, I get to common. talk whenever I want. So, <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So because it's a, a company, uh, my first go-to tool was LinkedIn, right? And okay. uh, it, it's just so nice that way. And there's some tools out there that, that will allow you to get more out of LinkedIn 
without having to pay their uh, their higher membership fee mm -hmm. uh, that you can pull down a lot of data. So it's so nice because you've got all the employees for that company listed there. Uh, they put a lot of their social media links from that. So you can just start spider webbing off from that. Right. Right. Um, but it's fantastic because you've got a whole bunch of stuff right there to start with. So you can kind of build your platform based off of that. So I'd say that gave me probably, you know, 20, 25 percent of my information right there, um, okay. which was which was fantastic. Organizational structure, everything like that. Um, there's a whole bunch of the, the, the normal ones as well. Uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, those were great. I really like Twitter. Because uh, you can go through it fairly quickly, mm -hmm. but then there's some more obscure ones. Like SlideShare actually gave me some really good reference letters uh, with some personal contact information, which was fantastic. Oh, and YouTube as well. I got a company tour of their office on YouTube, oh, which nice. gave me a whole bunch of points right there. Um, wow. So those are my go-to ones. Yeah, I mean it's different if you're doing it individual as opposed to a company. For yeah. a company, I love LinkedIn. Did you did you look at things like um, I don't know SEC filings or um, did you maybe mm -hmm. contact past employees? I know you said LinkedIn and you were scraping uh, re recently. There was a company that got that that was sued by LinkedIn or something because they were scraping the mm -hmm. site and they were recently found that well you know you can't stop people from scraping the site. So that was very instrumental to to mm -hmm. you know getting you to you know where where you, where you got ended up. But did you uh, contact like? past employees maybe and go, Hey, this is, you know, do, you know, this is the HR of blah company. You know, you left some stuff here. We need to verify some few things before we send it to you. Did you ever impersonate no, people I, or call past? No, not, not for my OSINT. Right. So there was no, no contact, no engagement as part of my OSINT. It was really just collecting information that's on the internet. Okay. And, um, you, you, you kind of follow different branches down depending on, on on what person you're looking at so some of the key targets that i was looking at i wanted to have more information so i developed a bit of an algorithm um for different pretexts that i had so i had a pretext for interns because my algorithm really kind of focused on uh having people that were new to the company new to the industry and that uh because they wouldn't really know a lot of the rules they wouldn't have a lot of a user awareness training they wouldn't know who to tell about some suspicious phone calls. And so with that pretext, I would start to look at what school they went to. I'd go to the website for mm -hmm. their school, what they majored in, uh, how long they were there, what they did as far as special hobbies while they were there. So I could call from that school and really relate to them about what they did there and, and kind of really get that, uh, build that relationship while I was on the phone. So depending on your pretext and who you're looking at, I, I went down different kind of rabbit holes. So you were attacking children is what you're saying. You were attacking the, the unpaid. <laughs> you were attacking the poor intern. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. yes, yes. Have you no the shame, interns, sir? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, it's it's a game, right? Right. Um, I, I didn't violate any interns. I didn't, I didn't, they didn't get any on the phone. So right. I feel pretty good about that. Cool. So, um, Amanda, did you uh, did you do any of that stuff, or was there anything that you did differently in in your experience to um, to do it? So I did, yeah, I did use LinkedIn. Um, and a funny thing about that is, I don't, I think they cracked down on it more, but I was able to se LinkedIn so I could get my own um, API key mm. uh, nice. and plug it into. Um, oh shoot. What's the free version of the OSINT? Oh, damn it. Uh, oh, crap. It's the one with the transforms. Yep. Yep, transforms. It kind of looks like Metasploit. Yeah, kind of. I've written about it before. Robert, help us out, brother. It. Help us out. It's fantastic. Uh, data, data Sploiter. Uh, oh, shit. Um, I'm dying here. It's not Armitage. I keep thinking Armitage, but it's not Armitage. You know, there's people listening to this just They're screaming, screaming into yes, the they podcast. Are. They are like, <gasps> it's this. Yeah, I can feel it. Anyway, we'll come back to that. So, um, we'll, we'll 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 come back to it. I know people are yelling at us, and it, it uh, makes me so sad. Yeah, I I used that tool. Okay, uh, Maltigo, Maltigo, <laughs> Maltigo. No, 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 no. The the um the uh, command line version. Oh, that's not Maltigo. Oh, okay, but it's. 
like Metasploit, but it's oh, not. Okay. I can't. I, 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 if I yeah. went and looked for it, I, I would be able to find it. People are going to yell at us. Whatever. Yeah, I, don't I, feel know, sad I know. Now. I can already feel their hate. So <laughs> when you guys are talking, I'll look it up. Okay, and do that. that. Way that'll like, do that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, anyways, I, I was able to use that for LinkedIn, which was kind of cool uh, because I just pretended like I was somebody else and they gave me one uh, oh. <laughs> as a researcher. Um, and then uh, there were a couple other things that were cool that I, I mean, I use Shodan a lot. Um, uh, ours were te- uh, telecommunication companies. Uh, so I, uh, I was able to find like logins to their F5s and their VPNs, wow. like wow. They had a whole whole bunch of uh, self signed certs on the the uh, logins for their F5s. Hmm. Um, That's awesome. Uh, was any of that sim- helpful for the the actual calls that you made? Uh, that's a whole yeah. Uh, I didn't get any flags. Oh, on my calls. And then I went into like a full blown anxiety attack when I was done. It was really bad. <laughs> so how many times? Ta- so is it a room of people who are doing this all at the it same time? Gig- no, no, no. They they put you like they they say like my call was at, n- at 11 o'clock Saturday morning. OK. And you just know you have to be there. Oh. And um, Jen Fox won that year uh-huh. and she went before me. Yeah. Um, and she just oh, knocked no. it out of the park. Like she does that for her job. That's the worst. Oh, and she just knocked out of the park, got all the flags. She had like this dossier of shit and like just what she was going to say and who's like just this, this big binder of stuff. And I, I legit had my phone <laughs> with, with my report on it. That's it. I had nothing. I had never watched a call before hers. Ah. Uh. Um, I loved doing the report. Like the report was like my jam. I got to like sit behind my computer for hours and just, you know, to write the report. Um, but yeah, I went after her and, uh, so all of the, all of the other companies had, um, storefronts. Right. So like Verizon, you know, they have a storefront where you, they're open on weekends my company had no store friends. They provided mm. like phone service and DSL. So I was forced to call like, I found the HR manager's personal cell phone number. Nice. <laughs> so I was like all, trying to call, like I, I got her on the phone while she was driving. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I had zero, zero luck and I wasn't any good at it. So, so okay. So you, you guys mentioned several times that you found personal phone numbers of people. Did you use tools like, uh, or, or websites that like people finder or white pages or Spokio or those things to find that information? Yeah. Did you actually pay for oh. those things or did you just use multiple websites? Yeah. Cause I found that like Spokio will give you some items, but not others. And then if you go to like, uh, white pages, they'll give you other parts that were missing from the the Spokio stuff. So you don't necessarily always have to get like the $40 membership for the, the, the full background check. Yeah, I spent no money. So my okay. my mandate was not to spend money. And um, Spokio, you, you can use it for free limited, right? Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. You have limited functionality. Yeah. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of them out there. So um, who's the guy? Michael uh, Bazell? Mm-hmm. Uh, so his website, you can go there. It's really nice because he's got everything listed there, right? So right. if you've got their email address, you go there, punch it in, and it just it, it you know it lists them all there. So um, and you can use a whole bunch of those ones that are similar to Spokio. If it doesn't give you something, the other ones will. Yeah, I so. used um, Spokio. Uh, I use Pipple quite a bit. Um, I yeah, like, that's a good one. Yeah, Pipple's a good one. Uh, yeah. White Pages um, is always a good one too. Uh, family Tree Now. Family Tree oh, Now yeah. is, is yeah. like crazy yeah. accurate. It's crazy good. Yes, that's um, creepy. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I found I found the name of the tool. It's Recon NG. Oh, oh God, that's nice. it. Oh, oh God. By Tim Tomes. Yes. Landmaster. Cool yeah. Landmaster. Yeah. Landmaster. Yeah. Oh. You know what I like, which most people don't look at, is the uh, wearables, right? So everybody goes and does the run and stuff like that. And um, whether it be, uh, oh, what's that? Run Keeper. There's that mm-hmm. one. And there's, uh, there's like oh, what's the other run. one? That I really... 
map my run. Yeah, map my run. Into Mondo so, is one. Yeah, yeah. And so you can friend people on there, right? There's yep. Strava. Um, so Fitbit everybody's has a one. community too, where you can friend people as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you can find people on there and hopefully see where they ran, right? Right. And, oh, um, oh, a yeah. lot of my phone numbers. Uh, I was looking at my report. A lot of my phone numbers I found um, on. Uh, they had some open web directories mm -hmm. with um, just stuff in it. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that I I pulled some stuff out of. Okay. Like I, I know the different escalation numbers and cell phones of like their knock. Oh, very cool. It was interesting. Yeah. Okay. For numbers, you know what was hilarious was their dial by name and everybody so many companies have this right okay you dial into their pbx you hit one or star or whatever it is mm -hmm. and it just gives up everybody's phone number and really? sometimes titles as well yeah and uh you know if you're a real attacker <laughs> you just go in get all of that uh hit everybody's voicemail which usually tells more about them as well and um you just get heaps of information just from that yeah, especially yeah. if you get an out of office where the guy's like, yeah, I'm going to be in Cabo this week, so please don't contact yeah. me or whatever. And you're like, okay, sales guy, easy, easy guy. Yeah. Right. So yeah. We, we had some questions because somebody, some couple people asked, uh, Mr. J. Huff, Bay Wolf on uh, on Twitter is a, is a slacker of ours on our Slack. And he asked, I would be curious if he had a Hail Mary up his sleeve in case the person on the phone was about to shut the call down on what it was. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think the typical answer would be never stop your pretext. Never say, oh, yeah, you got me. Um, you know, I think the joke is even when they're putting the handcuffs on, you want to keep in character. Mm -hmm. um, but I differed from that a little bit. So my Hail Mary really was to congratulate them. And that's in the spirit of what Chris Hagnaggy teaches is that, you know, never leave the person feeling bad after you've talked to them, right? Mm -hmm. And so if they if they're on to me and they say, hey, we don't think you're really who you say you are. My my backup was to say, you know what? Congratulations. You caught me. That is so amazing because you're the only one who's who's caught me so far. Right. And I've been hired by your company to do this and to check everything. And you know what? That's fantastic. I'm going to mark down that you passed. You're the only one. But can I ask you these questions? So just to get a baseline and confirm the answers. Right. So Ooh. I continue my attack, but I congratulate them on, on questioning me. So I never did that, but that was my Hail, Hail Mary. Okay. Um, let me see. I hear that works really, uh, really well in person, too. Um, like if you have a get out of, uh, get out of jail free letter or whatever for management, like if you're actually on an engagement and mm -hmm. you just never use your letter, nice. you try and get out mm -hmm. of it anyways. Yeah. Because then it doesn't count. Yeah. Um, so, uh, David, uh, another one of our, our Mr. Cybuck, he said, does he know and practice accents, Southern, Boston, British, Russian, etc.? Oh, that's another good question. And I love accents. Um, I spend a lot of time talking to people down south, and I like to think that I could pull that off. But in reality, I'm not an actor. I you know, I can't do accents very well and I can't sustain an accent. Right. So I think trying to do an accent is asking for trouble Yeah. because it won't last. Even the best of us just it just kind of, you know, we know a few words, how to do a few words well. But after that, we forget about it because we're thinking about our flags. And, um, you know, I just think it's a bad idea. I think the more important thing is to try to match the person's tone and way of speaking and so if they're a bit shy, don't overwhelm them. If they're, you know, an, uh, you know, a, an executive who's going to be more assertive, then you want to be a little faster in your talking. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to match the person, but not give them a, a fake accent. Yeah. <clears throat> so you said you're a, you didn't tell us before, but you're, you're a dirty manager. You're not really infosec people. I, and I, I, I feel, you know, feel a little betrayed and social engineered by having you come on the show, <laughs> to be honest. Um, <laughs> So how, how is this going to help you or how, how are you taking this back to your current you know, position and, and, and educating your people on the experience of this? I'm sure this must make things like yeah. potential phishing uh, examples and, and training where you might give training to your people and go, look, I went through this. This is what people look for. These are the kinds of questions mm -hmm. people ask. This is how we know we're being hit on, yeah. you know, 
try to deflect, try to send it to me and I'll, you know, BS the BSers or whatever. How do you, how do you, uh, what are you doing yeah. with this now that you've learned it? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's really interesting, right? Because I knew going in there that this was a, a growing threat and coming out, it just reinforced that thought. And, and it's, it's very cost effective to do social engineering, right? I can, you know, trying to get through people's uh, you know, firewalls and, and, and spending a lot of time at the technical level, right? It's very costly. And mm. uh, whereas social engineering, all I have to do is be lucky, right? I don't even right. have to be that good. So DEF CON really proves that, right? The social engineering village shows that you can take 16 amateurs, you know, they can go into a room, we prepare a little bit, but we're not professionals. And we're going to pull a bunch of information out, right? And we haven't even gone to the site or, or engaged people at all. So imagine what you could do if you did that. And we hear about it in the news all the time. You hear about these nightmare stories where the CFO transfers $50 million to the bad guys because someone phoned him up that sounded like the president mm. and said, we got to do this wire transfer. Yep. Um, you know, so it's real. It's growing. And, uh, you know, it would be really embarrassing to fall victim to something like that. Right. And um, if you if we did fall victim to that, you know, I'm pretty sure it's the InfoSec guys who are going to take the heat. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's I think it's something that we all have to take seriously. And um, and so I came out of that thinking, OK, I got to get to work here. It's not just, you know, patch management. It's, you know, I got to take a look at this and how am I going to solve that problem? So, you know, we're going to spend a lot of energy over the next year really ramping up and doing OSINT on our own company, on our own people, right. doing uh, bishing calls with our executives, right? So I'm going to mess with our execs and it's going to be a lot of fun and hopefully, you know, they like it as well. But, you know, that's what we have to do. I think we have to harden our people, right? It's, you do the little bit of user awareness training. We do the, you know, typical companies might do that once a year. You do the old click through stuff, mm -hmm. which is not that effective. And we have to improve that and modernize it and make it fun and interesting. Yeah. So do you think it's, it's a, you think it should be a requirement of people? Um, and I'm going to ask Miss Manda this because she just started her new job too. Are, to do OSINT on your company and find out what you can find. Is it, is it necessary to do that and see if there's any, you know, holes plugged? And do you think that, cause you, of all the stuff you found on LinkedIn, do you think that there should be a social media policy so that people shouldn't be necessarily advertising what companies they work for? Now I, I understand for some departments, it's a badge of honor and they're bragging, Hey, look, I work for, you know, blah, 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 you know, whatever. But should, should they be, advertising that because it does make them a target obviously i mean you you showed quite easily that that can be used against them do you want me to go first yeah <laughs> we'll let you go first because okay. you let him go first last time okay um uh i think you should do osint on any company that you plan on working for uh okay before you go to work there because really? you may not know what you're getting into uh okay i i wouldn't have made one career choice for sure um <laughs> already if i would have done that prior now what are you talking like you went to glass door and found out the place was a pos and you didn't no, go i looked up no i should have looked up their ip address space on shodan and seen how bad badly their security was oh <laughs> oh i didn't um, yeah i didn't think about that yeah yeah like actual like t technically related stuff um, what was the other thing I was going to say? You said policy, oh, policies against sharing stuff on social media. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's a badge of honor for a lot of us. There's a lot of information you can get from LinkedIn. Um, but I think, I don't think you can stop people from, from creating profiles on, I mean, you could try, but it's not going to happen. Um, maybe uh, teaching them a little bit better way of how to word things mm. might, might be better because you can't just say like at this company, I implemented this brand of this rev this way. And, and I mean, you're giving away a lot of information at that right. point, or you could just list, I've worked with blah technologies. 
Yeah. You know, there's a difference, a big difference, I think, um, when you're connecting the dots. But then, I mean, if if somebody's going to attack you and they may not use that information anyways, just because it, it if they if they get a a, a hold on the inside of your network um, and, and they're already there, that information it doesn't matter anyways because they're they're already on the inside and they're going to be able to find it with scans or right. or passive listening and all right. the other tools and stuff. So, okay, Robert, same question. Yeah, yeah, I think the policies are good to have. I think you want to put in there, you know, how certain behaviors may be inappropriate. I think sometimes people lose sight that in person you can behave one way. And that doesn't really often change online, right? So you're still accountable. The problem with policies is nobody reads them. And right. uh, you can write an awesome policy and you can put it on your you know, intranet or SharePoint site or whatever you have and nobody looks at it and um, you know, or clicks through it. And so I think you have to do a little bit more than that and, and educate people and tell them, okay, why? Why do we have this policy and what does it mean to you? And um, so doing my OSINT of the company, I found things like pictures of their VPN client. That's probably not something you want to put out there. So, yeah. you know, you want to educate employees that say, hey, by the way, I know you have a Twitter account. No problem. I know you're on LinkedIn. No problem. I know you don't want to do. I know you want to do some self-promotion. That's not the issue. All we ask is that you be responsible when representing our brand. And then also try not to make us less secure. Don't advertise what our VPN is. Don't talk about what kind of access cards we have and just limit that, right? Yeah. And I think that that awareness is is uh, pretty easy to do. I think as, as IT people, um, we tend not to focus on that as much as maybe we should. Um, you know, user awareness training can be pretty fun and it gets you out there. Um, and I think we just might need, need to do a little bit more, more of that a little bit better. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so I have one other question. So. Did you get briefed before or after you went into the to the to the booth? Did you know if you didn't get enough flags, would they even let you in there to compete? Yeah, yeah. So some people got more flags than others during the initial OSINT phase. Um, some people had a real hard time. Some people did awesome. Mm. Um, but once you're accepted, once they say okay, you're you're in as part of the sixteen people, um, you go to the end. Okay. And uh, you come to Vegas and you, uh, you know, maybe you're going to do really well at Vegas, uh, even if you didn't do well in the first phase, right? Or, or vice versa. Um, one person didn't show up uh, in Vegas. We don't know what happened, mm. but, um, you know, and maybe the person just felt, well, I didn't do great in the first phase. I'm, I'm going to bail. Uh, but I'd recommend nobody bail and, and just, just see it through. Okay. Because so, you never know. They're having one at Derby this year, too. Yeah, I saw that. Mr. Huff, uh, Mr. Huff mentioned that they were going to have it at Derby, but uh, he missed the missed the deadline, so he couldn't uh, couldn't join in. So, um, I would, yeah, I would be interested in watching that just for, you know, just for my own edification. Um, very cool. All right. Well, um, I don't think Mr. Betcher's going to join us. Uh, if he did, he's probably going to miss the whole thing. Um, but. Uh, I, he would have loved to have, have talked about this. Um, I think it would have been he would have he would have enjoyed it greatly. So, uh, Robert, do you uh, have an online presence that somebody might be able to contact you and discuss more about your experience? For sure, yeah. So probably the best way is Twitter. Um, so it's at Robert E. Sell S E L L. Mm -hmm. so okay. That's the best way to reach me. So yeah, I welcome any questions, any recommendations, especially, right? So if people are out there trying to develop an OSINT program for their company, or they just want to go back and forward and forth with me and on questions and ideas, super happy to do that. Cool. Excellent. Uh, so Miss Amanda, you're, uh, you're busy jet setting and everything. You were talking about your B-Sides Wellington appearance. Uh, you're yes. going to be, uh, in the NZ there. Um, in November. Uh, so if people wanted to discuss with you things about your new job or, you know, try to, you know, run SE on you, how would they go about doing that? Nothing. I quit Twitter. Oh, <laughs> look, you can't rage quit that. It, it's the more, I know <laughs> I'm too, I'm, I'm, I'm too tied in. I can't, it's I, like, I just, I'm, I'm a, I'm a little break. Oh. I just, 
We're just on a break. Are you on a uh, Ross and Rachel break? So you're gonna, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. okay. It'll, it'll right. be fine in a little bit. Okay, yeah. Um, sorry, but it's like I can turn, I can Tina. Oh, sorry, baby. I'll I'll be better next time. And then you come back, and then it's and it just you know, beats the shit out beats of you again. You again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry if you were triggered there. I apologize. That was so, it's so explicit. It's such an explicit tag. Uh, send your hate mail to yeah. at Brian Break. BDS.podcast, gmail.com. I apologize. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> on, on Twitter or Slack more lately uh, at InfoSister, I N F O S Y S T I R. Okay. Very nice. Um, Mr. Betcher, if he was here, uh, you can get a hold of him at uh, Betcher Pwned, B O E T T C H E R P W N E D on Twitter. Uh, he's also uh, our um, uh, IMF security. Uh, he does the LogMD thing, so if you want to talk to him about that, that's great. Uh, and you can also go to malwarearchaeology.com and, uh, you know, discuss with him that stuff. Um, so we are on Twitter as well. The official podcast is at BreakSec, and you can follow me, Brian Brake, at Brian Brake, B-R-Y-A-N-B-R-A-K-E. Um, we have a Slack. A lot of people on our Slack. Mr. Sell is going to be there soon, um, I hope. You got it. Ah, there we go. See, look we at that. We need to get up to a thousand people. Standing up right now. S- Social engineered. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> so you can... <laughs> <laughs> so you can sign up if you want to come over and have some interesting yeah, conversations. Uh, you go to breaksec.signup.team. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff going on. We got red teaming. Uh, we just started our book club. The book is Cyber Operations, Building, Defending, and Attacking Modern Computer Networks by uh, Dr. O'Leary, I think. Or Professor, uh, Professor O'Leary. I won't say doctor because I'm not sure he's a doctor. But uh, you can get that on Amazon. Uh, you know, we're going to do that. We actually hand that off to Mr. Cybuck, who's going to be, uh, you know, heading that up. We'll have a, a U.S. So, and a European version. So, I'm so glad, too. <laughs> I'm delegating. I'm delegating. So. Dude, like, I'm... Once we were done with ours, yeah, I was so happy. Yeah, well, I think we did it wrong. It was like our our second book, <laughs> and we yeah, drug we, out forever. We shouldn't have done one chapter at a time. We should have done two or three chapters at a time. And Mister Cybuck is going to fix that for us. So uh, I'm delegating that to him. He's one of our lieutenants that's uh, going to be doing that. Uh, Breaksec.signup.team. So uh, thank you to all of our patrons. Um, thank you for the very successful PowerShell class we just did with McDouglas. Uh, we have a handshake agreement with our instructor. We're actually going to do an intro to reverse engineering course. We're hopefully going to start that, I want to say, after Derby, probably uh, mid to late October. So uh, we're going to be doing that. And I have a handshake agreement with the instructor. He's going. He's writing a syllabus right now, as a matter of fact. So uh, And that will be very much enjoyable. I, I look forward to that one. Uh, I am going to be front row center for that. So, um, you know, I do a – so if you're in Seattle – and you don't know where to meet up people. I have a meetup that I've been doing for about the past two and a half years. Um, uh, it's called CSEC East. We're on meetup.com. You can go search for us uh, or at CSEC East on Twitter. Uh, we meet once a month on the first Tuesday of every month, except for next month. It's actually the first Wednesday because of the holiday. But, you know, it's a good networking opportunity. And we have a Slack channel. Actually, if you just go to breaksec.signup.team, we have a channel called CSEC East, and you can, you know, meet people and network with local Seattleites and Bellevueans and Redmonton Knights or whatever they're called. Uh, you know, so if you work in Seattle and you want to get some networking done, please feel free or, or in the East area, you know. So um, did we miss anything? Did I forget any? thing miss amanda uh i'll Bye. be giving my tutorial in october at o'reilly what's that what what tutorial is this it is called something about is this the thing in new york is this the thing in new yeah, york that this defense is the was... thing in new york okay it's three hours long and i'm having one hell of a time trying to figure out how to create content for her because i've never given anything longer than an hour oh yeah so at first i had like 200 slides i'm like that's you know that sounds like a really really bad idea oh right um less memes less cat i picks. did put the i did put the one meme in today oh, okay that we, that we did um but yeah i'm doing three hours on 
uh, it is called Reversing the Kill Chain, an Actionable Framework for Defending Against Common Threats. Dang. Um, yeah. That I sounds fun. Up. We should do the podcast on that. Do you know who well, uh, is? You know? So I thought about doing a training on it, maybe. Oh, that'll be sweet. Yeah. But it's only three hours, so it would only be like. That's okay. Two, three week, you know, class or something after Derby, but before our uh, intro to RE, that would be great. Robert, are you going to be uh, attending any con soon? I know you said you weren't going to Derby, sadly. Yeah, no, I'm not going to Derby. So there's uh, one here in lo- local Vancouver that I'm going to go to just a day one. So oh, but, you're just uh, up the street. Yeah, yeah, I'm just oh. north of you. You're on the other side of Canada. Oh, you're on the you're on good Canada. You're, I mean, oh wait. Wait a minute, no. God. Toronto's good Canada. Yeah, I'm West Coast, so yeah, West Side. Yeah, nice. Um, so yeah, if you make it down to Seattle, you got to come. and We'll have some coffee <laughs> or something, or go come see South East. I'll tell you when I'm down there. Oh, fantastic! I didn't know you were in in Vancouver. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, you're good Canada. I, I, I'm sorry, that's not good Canada. I can't say that. I've been to both sides of Canada. I've been to Prince Edward Island, Halifax, Nova Scotia. I've been up to Quebec. Um, I loved all of They're that. All you know what? They're all good. I love I love Canada, man. And, you know, sat, I'm sorry we're the hemorrhoid of North America right now. So um, Of the world. <laughs> of the world. We are the hemorrhoids. Oh, sorry. Um <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. This that was it for this week on Breaking Down Security. Uh, be safe, be nice to one another. Uh, have a great week, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. And we're clear. Oh my goodness. Oh, great. I just, we are the hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you do that, just continually. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I guess you've done it before, so it's not that big of a deal. I have, yes. I I actually, you know, you we mentioned the accent thing. I actually uh, was in high school. I did several accents in high school. Um, yeah. I can imagine that, you know, not getting the accent to stick when you're under that kind of pressure. You got 200 yeah. people looking at you. Are they heckling you when they're doing that stuff? No, they're amazing, right? Really? So, yeah, they're just wonderful people. The whole crowd, like the, I can't emphasize that enough. My experience at DEF CON has just been, and not everybody has the same experience as me, but right. for me, it's just been incredible as far as the people, right? So you could and hear like a pin of, drop when you're doing this stuff? No, not really. I mean, you'll hear people talking, but the, the, yeah, uh-huh. the booth is soundproof. And oh, so you okay. can, you can kind of hear them. And when something happens, everybody's like, oh, you know, and you can kind of hear whispering and it's like, oh, he got that flag. you know? Yeah. And, yeah, and so, cool. you know, and when you change pretexts, I noticed that when I changed pretexts, I went from the FedEx guy to um, just the uh, the HR person, it's you know your your tone changes, and I heard yeah. people talking about that. But uh, they're, they're they're so good, yeah, amazing. You, yeah. you know, I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, are you plan? I never asked the question, but are you planning on doing this again next year? And um, what did you do uh, then that you're like, man, I should have done this? And you're like, yeah. you'll fix it next year when you're doing it ne- if you do it next year. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer the first question, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to apply again next year and hopefully I get in. I also want to try to give back more every year. So right. I want to try to talk um, uh, next year as well. So oh. either both or one or the other. Very I cool. would do. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know what, it's, it's an amazing event and it's what you make of it really, yeah. I think is the, is the secret mm. there. Right. Cause I see people wandering around Actually, I took a guy with me this year from work. I said, you have to join me for this. It's going to be the best conference. And he liked Black Hat, but I don't know how much he liked DEF CON mm, because it was his everybody. first time. Yeah. yeah, and there's no structure, right, compared to some of the other ones, right? It's really just, you know, go do your stuff. We're not serving lunch, right? Yeah. And um, so if you're not used to that and you don't know how to deal with that, then it, it can be a bit of a problem. But for me, it was like, you know what? I got my power bars. Let's get this going, right? So That's awesome. 
Yeah, yeah. And what I'll change next year is I spent the first 10 minutes trying to get somebody on the phone mm. and that killed my time. I got, you know, more than half my points in the last 30 seconds, I think. And it was just rapid fire. Wow. Boom, 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 boom. So next time it's going to be get somebody on the phone. Nice. So I'll be okay. working on that. Miss Amanda, you yeah. should try out again, too. Never again. Why? On, Why? Amanda. What's wrong? Nope. I didn't enjoy it. Oh. It'll be you and me. We'll conquer. Mm-mm. Oh. They used to do teams. Oh, yeah. really? If we could do teams, I would. I'd be game. Like, let yeah, me do the report. Like, yeah. I would. I would write reports day in and day out if I didn't have to ever make a phone call again. Yeah. yeah. Like, I have phone call anxiety. Like, I can't talk to people on the phone. Yeah, I. I yeah. could never do sales because the cold calling thing. I couldn't handle but you, that. You guys do this without any problem at all. It's the same thing. No, there's no. prep. There's prep involved, no. and uh, no, I'm sweating. I I sweat. I mean, I've got pits going on yeah. right here. I mean, and you know, they I, have products I, for that. <laughs> that is a true <laughs> statement. That is a true <laughs> statement. Uh, I, you know, I don't. I've always wondered about going to DEF CON or maybe speaking at a like a, a legit event, not like the ISSA Rainier where we had three people the last time I went, um, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe the CTF thing or maybe something ancillary. Did they give you a stipend or like a free ticket to DEF CON to do that? Or you still had to buy in? No, no I still bought in. And, you know, the price for DEF CON is so affordable compared to anything else, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know what? It's like, here, take my 300 bucks or whatever it is. And it's just, okay. I'm happy to pay that for what I'm getting out of it. Yeah. So. Are you coming down for any of the cons in Seattle, B-Sides or HushCon or anything like that? I'd love to go to B-Sides. I went to B-Sides in Vancouver uh, this year, and I thought it was really good quality. Uh, nice. I want to talk at the B-Sides here next time it's on. Oh, I'm signed up for, there's a, uh, oh, what is the company? Um, Isaka. They're bringing right. in, uh, oh, what's his name now? Uh, the king of social engineers. They're bringing him in. Uh, uh. Oh, what's his name? What's his name? Oh, I got my picture with him. Mitnick? Yeah, Mitnick. Yeah, they're bringing in Mitnick. Um, wow. So that's early 2018 in Vancouver. So they're selling tickets now for that. Damn. It's called uh, BC Aware Day. Okay. Uh, so I'll go to that. But yeah, I wouldn't mind making it down there to uh, Seattle. Yeah. One of the things I didn't talk about in the podcast, but... Um, Do you want it in the podcast? Because this may be after audio. I don't mind. Okay. Yeah, put whatever you want in. Whatever I'm okay. saying, you can you can have. All right. So I volunteer. One of the things that I'm doing after my DEF CON experience is I volunteer for, for search and rescue up here in Canada. I think up here it's all volunteer. Yeah. And um, so we do various things. We do rope rescue. We do, of course, CPR. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that, that we have to learn how to do. Tracking is one of them. So if someone goes into the bush and we have to find them, we might track them. Oh, tracking but would be I want awesome. to do that so bad. Yeah. Like, like you, Maybe you mean like animal tracking where well, you can say, okay, this is a three day old print because yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. how big they were. This is how they were walking. This is their speed of so walking. I, I grew up hunting and uh, I always really, really enjoyed that, that kind of stuff. That's so. awesome. That would it's be fun, great. Right? Like ancillary, not security, but security kind of talk. That would be awesome. Well, yeah, it's my two worlds kind of combining, right? Because I, I, you know, I'm in it. I do a lot of infosec as part of that. And that involves doing things like OSINT, but then I'm doing this search and rescue volunteer part of my life where we sometimes go out looking for missing people. So if they think the person is, say, in the woods over there, we'll go looking for them. Yeah. But so then I started thinking, well, what about all the missing people that we're not involved in? Say the person mm -hmm. that goes to the 7-Eleven and then is gone, right? So we don't yeah. get involved in that. And there's not a lot of resources to get thrown into that, right? So as the family of that missing person, you're kind of thinking that there's a lot going on, but sometimes there's not, right? Yeah. yeah. So with people with our people with our skill set could actually make a big difference in that area, right? So I've been starting to look at that on how we could basically crowdsource people with our skill set to spend time uh, looking for these people that go missing just based on OSINT, right? Hmm. And yeah. um so, yeah, I've been sort of looking at that so far, and I think there's huge improvements that we could make, um, you know, as a society to have these people help out with that. So one of yeah. the projects I'm working on right now. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I mean, you'd have to interface with law enforcement, obviously, to get the clues yeah. and, and the, you know, the data they have. Actually, you know, it's funny you mentioned that crowdsourcing the, the thing. There, There's like a new TV show coming on with Jeremy Piven down here on CBS that's talking about crowdsourcing, you know, crime solving or something. So, yeah. 
they're just a little bit ahead of you, but yours is probably not as scorpion like as theirs is going to be. So, yeah, I'm not going to have all the special effects they've got. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I'm really just focused on missing people. It's not so much uh, criminal activity. And, and I'm not trying to be law enforcement or anything like that. Right. So this is really hands off. It's like, okay, I found this evidence and I'm going to submit it in this report to the authorities. I am not getting involved. Uh, they may already, may already have that information. I don't know, but I'm just contributing. Yeah. Um, so that, that interface as well would be a bit tricky, right? So yep. that's something I'm getting a lot of advice on and taking very slow and figuring out what's the appetite there uh, yep. for that from the authorities. I would imagine you'd almost want to be like a PI and get your PI license. That way you could more easily interface with, uh, mm -hmm. with, with the law enforcement that way and still work outside the bounds, but still work mm -hmm. kind of with them, you know? So that way they're not, exactly. you know, you're, you're vetted in some way. So you're not just like a psychic walking up going, Oh yes, yes. Uh, buried <laughs> under there, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Plus, I mean, once you got law enforcement, you know, involvement, you'd be able to use things like facial recognition technology that they've got. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, I know, Seattle's having issues with a lot of the the police cams that are going on in the area, but a lot of other cities don't have that issue. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it really depends. So, awesome. Yeah. You know, if you wanted to come down and speak at CSEC East, I've got a little thing brewing with the CSEC East thing where I'm going to be talking to a technology company uh, called Unity. Um, NCC group did an open forum there where they had some speakers and stuff. And we normally just go to a restaurant for like three hours and talk about stuff. But if you ever wanted yeah. to come down while well, we were doing kind of this, uh, this idea where I'm working at and talk about maybe the search and rescue stuff or how you handled yeah. the DEF CON thing, I would love to hear a talk about that and sure. some, and look at your report. That would be fantastic. Is your yeah. report open? Could we put a link to it? Yeah, so we don't share the oh, report. Oh, right. It's got the uh, company's name in it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I can oh, talk about the report. Things. Yeah, yeah. So we're pretty careful about that. And I actually destroyed the report after I handed in. I don't want to have it, you know, get out there. Right. I can okay. talk about it, but I just want to be really fair to that company. You so. should definitely submit a talk to B Side Seattle. I think that would be a great uh, discussion of what you did to, you know, do the OSINT for that. I think that would be a good talk yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll yeah. do that. Cool. All right. Thank you, Robert, uh, for coming on. I'm sorry you didn't get to meet Mr. Betcher. Um, uh, I, I will send you a, an autographed picture of him. And uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, What's that go for on eBay right now? Oh, it's definitely guaranteed to go up in value. Lots of so, money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Tens Where, of cents. Mine? Tens of cents. <laughs> Uh, it's it's I'm in the mail. One. It's in the actually that's what you're getting on the second uh, on Saturday. Was. Yeah, it's I'm a, so excited. Yeah, it's an inflatable Mr. Betcher, and yeah. So. You know, I have I talked to you about the fact that you can buy a uh, uh, fairly cheap custom cardboard life size cutouts. I want to get a fat head of him and put him on my wall here. <laughs> oh my god! Get a fat head, yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool if I could, you know, pan the picture over and it's just him on the wall. Yes. So I'm like, every time I get yeah. lonely, I just look up at Mr. Betcher. You know, that'd be fantastic. That's so creepy. <laughs> in a good uh, way. Yeah, in a good way. Exactly. Nope. Exactly. Mm -mm. What? <laughs> nope. Man. All right. Well, y'all have a good night. Thank you again, Robert. This will probably go Thank out uh, after the U.S. Labor Day holiday. So uh, probably around late Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so yeah, thank you again for coming on and it was very much appreciated. Oh, thanks for having me. It was a real honor. Yep. So. And seriously, if you're down here in Seattle, hit me up. I'm just half an we'll hour do. from Seattle and, uh, we'll definitely have some lunch. Likewise. If you're up here, let me know. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Sure. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye, -bye. Later.